Around the world, women struggle for equality, fighting injustice, sexual violence, and oppression. The mirror crying, look me in my eyes, no way. I float like a ribbon in the sky, no way. The new film may be set 100 years ago. We're in every home, we're half the human race, you can't stop us all. But Suffragette has 21st century issues at its core. Defy this government. Go for women! And the women behind the film were inspired by what's happening now. As we were developing it, and it took us six years, mm. um, we it suddenly started echoing world events. You know, we were hearing from people like Malala Yousafzai, and there was Pussy Riot, and, and it seemed to become more timely. And the, there's another wave, a resurgence mm. in these voices challenging repression, and perhaps that's the digital age that's mm. allowed these women a voice where they wouldn't have had it. Mm. I think there's been a growing sort of social activism as we've become aware of global inequality. And, and I think that is largely to do the digital age. And I think weirdly, you know, we look back in history and have been inspired by the past, but actually it's also the generation beneath us that we're starting to see blog and become real advocates for feminisms. Their film dramatizes real life events. The suffragettes began peacefully, but with their fight getting nowhere, turned to extreme measures. Emily Wilding Davison martyred on the racetrack. Along the way, they were brutalized. Like at Parliament on Black Friday in 1910, after the Liberal government shelved a bill that would have given women the vote. What was the most shocking thing you discovered in your research for this film? For me, it was the reading those accounts of the police brutality. You know, this episode Black Friday, which we've um, represented in that sequence outside Parliament, um, where the women go to protest and peacefully and they get attacked by the police and these accounts of women uh, being you know abused and repeatedly kicked and thrown to the ground and having their breasts twisted and skirts pulled up over their heads and realizing that that was ordered by the government or sanctioned by the government was so extraordinarily shocking and then also realizing that women well one were prepared to hunger strike for this cause which shows how desperate they were in their battle but also that they endured force feeding and which we now know is torture. Did you feel a burden to kind of get it right and it was a responsibility to tell it properly? I think we were very aware that we had to make something that worked as a film, that worked as a narrative, but also said something. And that sort of drove us, didn't mm. it? And, and to make it not just a piece of history that we could ignore and bury, as has been done, but something that speaks to an audience now. So many things that they were describing and the kind of basic pay inequalities, um, appalling work conditions, sexual abuse and violence in, at home and at work, mm. and parental custodial rights. You know, they felt they're 21st century issues still. Mm. In their industry, equality is still a long way off. Only a fifth of the films being shown at the London Film Festival are directed by women. You a suffragette, Mrs Ellen? Yes, but I consider myself more of a soldier, Mrs Watts. Though Suffragette has a marker down, with a strong, predominantly female cast and crew. We've been talking about the issue of there being so few women in film for so many years and it just doesn't seem to be changing year on, year out. For me, it was, it was kind of instinctive. We, we, we drew, we, we found the best people for the, for the jobs and they were women and I was delighted and now I would seek out those women to work with again. It's important we've made a film about women that promotes equality of women, but we also have to show it sells because I think if you don't show it sells, then you're actually saying it's not good business and we need to also show it can be good business. This is Mrs. Watts, Mrs. Pankhurst. Maud. Thank you, Maud. Never surrender. Never give up the fight. I mean, you were the first film to film in the Houses of Parliament. That may have just been wonderful timing. But do you think it was significant that it was this film? I mean, Parliament was an enemy of the suffragettes for a long time. I think it was a great marker of, of progress, and it was a hugely exciting moment. Yeah, we, you know, I was sitting there saying to the location manager, we have to get access to the Houses of Parliament. She said, no narrative film ever has, no commercial film ever has. And I said, well, we have to. And, and she was very tenacious, and then serendipitously, they opened themselves up to commercial filming. But, and then we put in our request to stage an anti-government riot in the very place that had barred women for centuries. And the fact that we were allowed to do that mm -hmm. felt wonderful in terms of us recreating history but also exciting in terms of how far we've come. Your film is about the kind of dawn of representation of women in politics in Britain. I wonder, you know, now, what do you think about the situation now? Do you take a view on, I don't know, Corbyn's cabinet, not mm. enough women, or, you know, mm. whether a woman should lead the Tory party next? Well, I just know how essential it was for me to find my role models ahead of me. So I was looking at Catherine Bigelow, Nora Ephron, and in theatre, Carol Churchill. So I was always looking for women that I could feel inspired by. And, you know, I think I have an 11-year-old daughter, and I look and I think, well, what will she think when she looks at that cabinet? Will it in any way say, oh, yes, men should be in the cabinet, not women? Do you think it's a time for women to be optimistic or frightened? 
Well, there's lots that we can be hopeful about, and there's also enormous progress. If you look at, well, in Britain from the time of the suffragettes, you know, when the vote was achieved, there was a slew of legislation. Suddenly, women for the first time got parental rights. They could become solicitors. They could sit on juries. They wouldn't be fired for being pregnant. You know, so you realise how far we've come. But I think the fearful aspect is useful because it keeps you being vigilant. The fact that the Chibok girls are still not free. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, no one can sleep easy at night when that's, you know, I think it's a constant reminder. So that's the great thing with the digital age is that you do stay connected beyond your own sort of smug equality that you think you have, you know.